This is Philip Benicola, director, producer, co-writer of Milkshake. Hello, this is Mark Gonzalez, uh, co-writer of Milkshake. We're on episode four now, but there's a little bit that I want to talk about with episode three real quick. Even though that episode, if you go back and watch it, it's largely one scene, really, right? It's yeah. all in the cars. It was one of the most complicated and difficult things to shoot, which is how this often works out. You know, I, I as the jerk that I am, will often write into my script something like, he looks at, he, actor one looks at actor two and falls in love. Good luck, actors. Because I'm pretty much saying to Phil and the actors, find a way to <laughs> do this. As much as I understood you were talking to me, I couldn't say that to the actors. Like, oh, good luck, you fucking Nimrods. <laughs> fucking idiots. I, yeah, because it's true. Like, you'll write good luck actors, which, which is, uh, there's a sentiment coming up in episode eight. Yeah. Uh, where there's an hallucination scene that you write in a very vague way that something's supposed to occur. And it's like, well, how do you interpret this thing that Mark had written? Uh, and interpretation Visually, is always a big yeah. part of directing and producing something, um, especially with no money. So, yeah, no, yeah, it's a uh, good luck actor. That was definitely episode three. But it's also a way of saying, well, yeah, it's also a way of, oh, this is a very important moment coming up right here. So Drake turns on the radio, and voila, the music comes on, and he talks. He is directly interacting with us. He's controlling the music, and then we cut into the future. Basically saying to us at home, you know, us, the viewers, hey, come on, let's have a good time. Yeah, we're just all partying. Because we're, we're at the party now. We're at the party proper. So, so Lance is still obsessed with names about his child, which we established in episode two. He's still, <laughs> still he also, obsessed. He loves making lists in these first episodes as we were trying to figure out ways to define our characters. Yeah, and he's a guy who writes about things and doesn't do much. Yeah. Which is the opposite of Drake. Uh, so he's now obsessed. He's now torn between uh, Drake and the future, which is the list, and he sees Samantha. And here we are in the El Pollo parking, Loco parking lot, which uh, was across the street from Phil's old place. We made this one of the safest parking lots because there was no security before we started shooting there. And then there was security by the time it was our last night as they realized we were stealing this location several nights <laughs> in a row. Now, I think that this is as good a time as any to talk about what it was like for me as a writer to write something and then show up on set and see it being produced. This is literally the first time in my, in my life where this has actually happened. And I, I think it's his day six. This is day six at this time. I was, I was working nights on Hell's Kitchen, so I was never able to make, to make it to any of these shoots. And then I got out, I, was, I actually got out early one night, and I was like, okay, I'll come to the El Pollo Loco parking lot, see what you guys are doing. And I roll up, and there's honestly more than I had ever expected. There's these two actors having their scene, there's two other actors, in another corner of the parking lot having their scene, and I just had this bizarre moment where I was like, oh my god, it's actually happening. <laughs> and where I kind of said, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> and this may have actually even been the first time that I saw Danny and Ned in character. I think so, yeah. Because you'd sent me pictures and stills of them and told me about it, and, but this was the first time I'd actually seen any of them interacting with each other and to see everybody kind of bring my characters to life, it was, it was pretty special and it was pretty incredible. And it made me, seeing this and then seeing the, a, a cut together episode from Phil kind of made me say, oh, oh I, I guess everybody knows, everybody knows what they're doing over there on that set. <laughs> because, you know, if, if you want total, as a writer, if you want total control, you, can, you have to be a poet or a novelist, I guess. Those are the only places where you're not going to give up your product to somebody else. Right, it's yours until you, you're ready to let it go. Yeah, but working on this, you know, I ba screenwriting is more like creating a blueprint or writing a, a cooking recipe, mm -hmm. you know. I can, I can build out as much as I can, but then I'm going to hand it over to you guys who are also artists and you're going to tr turn it into something 
different.